The following is a program of the Santa Barbara County Education Office. To learn more, visit sbceo.org. Susan Salcido, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools, and I'm so delighted today to introduce our guest, Santa Barbara City College President Dr. Anthony Beebe. Hi, Susan. Hi, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, We're glad so to be here. honored to have you. I'm really glad to be here. We'll this have is a, fun. Yeah, we'll have a great opportunity to get to know you and get to hear more about SBCC, which is such a gem in our community. It really is. It really is. And um, but before we go there, let's let's go back a little bit in time, in terms of Anthony Beebe as a as a child growing up. Tell us where you were born and raised and about your childhood. Oh, okay. So I, well, I was born in San Diego, and when I was uh, about four years old, my parents decided to move to Oregon, Southern Oregon. And my father had a dream of owning a, a horse ranch. And so we moved to Southern Oregon, and he bought a, an 80-acre horse ranch and realized very early on that you can't make a living very easily trading horses. And so he bought some cows and started uh, integrating the, the ranch operation with both cows and horses and it was really the beef side of the of the of the operation that that enabled uh, us to be successful as far as a, a family and being able to make a living so I grew up on a ranch and uh, in southern Oregon went to high school there met my wife my I had a high school sweetheart my wife Carolyn we've been married for 36 years I uh, just celebrated that last month, so I'm happy about that. Congratulations. So, yeah, and that's, that was kind of where I started, I was in Southern Oregon. That farm life, that ranch life, I'm sure taught you life lessons in terms of hard work and, uh, and ethics, and uh, you know, it, it never closes, does it? It's a 24-hour operation. All the time, yeah. and you know, I still get up at about 4.30 every morning. Um, that was kind of the routine I got into, doing chores and that kind of thing. So yeah, it gets it gets to be an ethic in your in your system. Mm -hmm. So you grew up in Oregon, and you ended up going to the University of Oregon. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And what did you study there? Well, I studied accounting and finance, but I have to tell you that I went to Lane Community College first. Mm -hmm. So I always like to make sure that everybody realizes that community colleges are a great place to start. And so I started at Lane Community College and just got through my, my general education requirements the first two years and then transferred over to the University of Oregon. Um, and as I said, my major was accounting and finance. And uh, it was kind of interesting how that came about, uh, that particular major. I didn't really personally put in a lot of thought uh, in terms of what my major was going to be. But I know that my parents wanted somebody to do the, the books and the taxes for the ranch. And so the deal was that if you do the books and taxes for the ranch, we'll pay for your, your schooling at the University of Oregon. So I said, okay, well, hey, that works. And so I, I went on and became, uh, and, and got my accounting and, fi and finance degree at the University of Oregon, so. I, I see, yeah, so that's Not how a lot of planning. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, you know, we want to eventually trace a path to where you are today as president of SBCC. And you began that for us because you said you went to Lane uh, community College. Mm -hmm. Then you went to the University of Oregon. You studied to go back potentially to the to the farm to the ranch. You never did. So let's because uh, we because we've talked and I mm -hmm. know that you didn't. But what did you do after graduating from University of Oregon? Let us uh, continue that arc now to where you are today. You didn't you didn't go right into being a city college president. No, I, know I that. didn't. I had a very unusual pathway. And actually, before I, I got to Eugene and, and went to the University of Oregon, I had a whole career um, that started in high school. Um, and the way this worked out is, is that when I was in Talent, it was Talent, Oregon, where I, I grew up and, and spent my, my time on the ranch. Um, and Talent, Oregon is a little bit like uh, um, Mayberry, RFD, if you, want, if you will. I mean, at the time, there were about 120 people in the town, so it was very small. And I had a lot of really good role models, including 
uh, Chuck Roberts, who was the chief of police there. I think he was the only employee in the police department, so it was very much like Andy Griffith in Mayberry. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ray Evans, Chief Ray Evans, who was the, the pol uh, fire chief. Uh, these were fantastic role models and really kind of took me in and talked to me about uh, what it was like in terms of being a, a police officer or a fire fireman. And I uh, really decided that public service was important. And they, they both instilled these values in me as well as my parents, that public service was the highest level of giving that you can possibly uh, have for the community. And uh, so I, I decided that I wanted to become a fireman. I didn't like the idea of being shot at, um, so I, I decided that I'd, I'd be, a, be a fireman, and I really liked fire trucks and, and all the equipment and that kind of thing. So this is while I was in high school. When, okay. So when I uh, was a freshman in high school, they had a, what they called a co-op ed program. I'm not sure they even have those anymore, but it was a, an internship program at the fire department that permitted uh, kids after school hours to, to work as volunteers. Actually, it was a paid uh, internship. I got two dollars and seventy-five cents an hour. I mean, so you it was a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to get rich on this. Um, but so I did that, and um, I did it all through high school, Susan. I was I was involved with the fire department all the way through high school, and really got some great experience. Even going on fires my junior and senior year in high school, small fires, brush and grass fires, small structure fires, and maybe some car fires. Um, so that by the time I graduated from high school um, and I started applying for full-time paid fire department jobs, I very easily got a full-time paid fire department job mm -hmm. at Douglas County Fire District 1 just outside of Eugene, Oregon, up in, up in, uh, or up in, in the Roseburg area. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of what I did. And I, and I worked in the fire department for about nine years altogether and worked my way up into the, uh, the fire training academy and uh, enjoyed teaching the new recruits so much that I thought to myself, I need to go back to school and get into teaching, uh, doing this full time as a, as a teacher. And so I did that and that was kind of one of the motivations for me to, to go back to college. Wow, I can d just tell that the ranch life, the fire life, the teaching life has all, have all made their way into your current professional role and probably every role that you've had. And you've, you, before coming to Santa Barbara City College last year, 2016 was your first, first uh, beginning here, yeah. um, you were in San Diego as the president of the San Diego City College for, for a period of time. Yes, I was. And there, talk about having uh, accomplishments, and one of them being named the people's president. I know that that is a very meaningful recognition for you. What does that mean in terms of being the people's president. What does that mean for you, and what did it mean for that that honor? Well, uh, that all came. That's a long story in itself, and that all came about from some work that I was doing in one of the oldest uh, neighborhoods and communities in San in San Diego, um, called Barrio Logan. And uh, Barrio Logan is a community that, in many ways, was kind of uh, left behind in terms of the development of San Diego. It, it really wasn't getting the attention that it needed, and so. One of the things that I decided to do was really give it the, the attention that it deserved. And so over a, pe a period of, gosh, it was something like six or seven years, we were able to do a community assessment and figure out the needs of the community and then uh, go about putting together a facilities plan to build ultimately after the six year period um, a 67,000 square foot Cesar Chavez health, uh, allied health training center in that community and so that 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 award or recognition was uh, really uh, in light of of all the work that I was able to to kind of put in to help that uh, facilities come to life yeah that that's really incredible you really reached out into the community and 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 uh, uh, spread the wings in terms of the city college out into where the people reside and what what they needed for the community mm -hmm. really incredible and now it brings us to Santa Barbara City College and I know you're equally passionate about being in the community and really those relationships and what City College which already is a jewel we, we everybody is. says it is it and it is, is so um, can be so um, tell us some of some of the amazing treasures that come with being uh, the SBCC president and some of the directions you're hoping to go. 
Well, I love being the president at Santa Barbara City College. It's really fantastic. No matter where I go, everybody always likes to come up to me and tell me about they're either going to the college or their grandkids are going to their co to the college or you know, somebody in the family has gone to Santa Barbara City College at some point in their lives and made a massive change uh, in the direction of their lives. And so, I mean, that's always nice to hear. Um, one of the very first things I did, actually it was day one of, of uh, when I started on the job, was I did a community survey. And I, I asked a, a simple question. If you were the, the new president of Santa Barbara City College, what would you focus on? What would be your highest priority? And so I got quite a response from the entire community, and that's how I learned how, how much people love the college. Um, but there were some things in that survey that helped me kind of focus on, on things that I knew were important. One of them was adult education. And you know maybe we can talk about that in, in itself uh, at some point. Um, of course, parking, housing, all the other things that, that the college uh, impacts uh, were important to the community that they, they felt uh, would be needed to have some kind of focus on. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it is a jewel, it's a treasure for this community, and it's just, a, it's really a lot of fun for me to be the president uh, of the college. We have some fantastic faculty there, unbelievable. When we put out a, a call for an announcement to hire a faculty member, we'll get 60, 70, 80, 100 applications for one position. Mm -hmm. They're clamoring to be at uh, SBCC. They want to be at SBCC. Mm -hmm. They come from all over the United States to, to be here. Um, and so we have top flight uh, faculty that are teaching there. I mean, if you've had a chance to take any of the classes or you know anybody that has, it, they'll, they'll attest to the fact that they are just Absolutely. fantastic teachers. Absolutely. Well, Anthony, you mentioned adult ed. Yes. Adult education. So let's talk about that. What's what's happening at Santa Barbara City College for, for our adults? Well, adult education at Santa Barbara City College has a long history. And it goes back um, decades, really, in terms of the history of, of adult education at Santa Barbara City College. And about five years ago or so, um, the decision was made for budgetary reasons and other reasons to do away with the free adult education programs you know, at SBCC. And um, I know that, that that caused a lot of, uh, of concern and, uh, for the community, but um, you know, that, that's kind of history now. And so what, we're just, what we've decided after looking into all of this, that we want to bring back the state-funded adult education uh, that was offered before um, at Santa Barbara City College and do it under the new umbrella of an organization we're calling the School of Extended Learning. And so we actually had kind of a soft uh, opening for the School of Extended Learning this fall um, with, with, I think we've got about 300 uh, classes that we're, we're offering for uh, adult education there. And we're gonna have a grand kickoff. You're invited, everybody's invited, the community's invited. Um, in the spring, which would mark 100 years of adult education at Santa Barbara City College. Wow. And so we're excited about that kickoff and, and starting a new, new phase and a new era with adult education. Center for Lifelong Learning will be kicked off soon, sounds like, and what an opportunity for our community again. 100 yeah. years. 100 yeah, years. Really incredible. And something else you said earlier, your start as a firefighter in ninth grade a paid internship for, I think you said, for a whopping $2.50 an hour. Two seventy-five. Two seventy-five. Yeah, yeah two seventy-five an hour. Um, is something that actually you're um, supporting in a different way, and that's through Partners in Education, which is a, it's an organization that does provide internships and volunteer experiences for students in our high schools. And you are the the president of the board for Partners in Education. Yes, Congratulations! Thank you. On that, I and that. tell tell us about um, the the presidency for you for that um, organization. What does that mean for you? And what does Partners in Education mean for you? Well, let me just start with what Partners in Education is all about. It's it's a really an important uh, another treasure in the community in terms of what it does and what it what it accomplishes. Um, there are kind of three. Three mission elements with the Partners in Education. Uh, they re it relates to students, it relates to teachers, and it relates to families. In terms of students, our philosophy is really making sure that they understand that there's unlimited opportunities for them to be successful. There's not always just one, a lot of times people think it's just one track. 
uh, might be a baccalaureate degree or something like that. But, but that's not, we know that's not true. We know that there's endless opportunities for them to be successful. It could be a certificate, it could be vocational technical education, it could be a bac baccalaureate degree, it could be all kinds of things. Um, and so what we try to do is be kind of a matchmaker in some ways, determining what students' interests are, working with them, working with the school that, where they are now, and then helping them in terms of being able to get an internship like I had. That's, that's the connection that I have and why I think it's so important. Get an internship so that they can explore whether or not that internship fits what they want to do in their lives. Um, you know, because that, that really can change the entire trajectory of a, of a student if they can find a passion in something or an interest in something. The second piece of this has to do with uh, teachers and supporting teachers in the, the local school districts here. We know that with uh, tight budgets and increasing class sizes and some of those kinds of things that the teachers are really pressed uh, and need help in the classrooms. And so if we can put volunteers in the classroom to help those teachers be more efficient and more effective working with the kids, then that's another goal of the partners in education. And then the third mission element of, of partners has to do with, with families. And it has to do with providing computers to families that wouldn't otherwise be able to have computers. And so we have a kind of a, a, a program where we'll, we'll take gently used computers, clean them off, uh, do all kinds of maintenance on, a, on them, and then give them to families and to, to kids so that they have computers to be able to learn and and study on and, and be able to kind of get connected and be part of the, the new age, right? So that's really what Partners in Education is all about. Sounds like you are ready to, for that presidency and that you, you're ready to fill that mission that Partners in Education serves in the community. Well, Thank you so. for serving. Oh, you bet. Yeah, it'll be a really great year under your leadership there. And, and you mentioned uh, providing opportunities for students who may not actually go on to get a four-year degree. And City College, SBCC, really fits that um, niche for many, many students mm -hmm. um, for, for potentially certificates in trades. Talk to us a little bit about that in terms of preparation for students, adults and, and uh, young adults, um, who are entering City College, not necessarily for that four-year degree and transfer, but really for vocational studies. Well, I appreciate you asking me that question um, because a lot of times people feel that the only path in college is to go on and get your bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. um, and that's certainly a worthy goal and a, and a noble effort. But there are many other options. Um, and Santa Barbara City College, I should tell you, does an excellent job of preparing students to go on to the four-year schools. And they go all, all over the United States and in the best uh, colleges you know, around. So I mean, we're proud of that. Uh, I know the faculty are proud of that. Um, but when it comes to, uh, actually, it's, it's about two-thirds of the students that don't go on and get a baccalaureate degree. Right now, the average uh, uh, percentage of folks that, that have a baccalaureate degree in the United States is about 34%. So it's about a third of the students have, have a, a bachelor's degree. That means two-thirds don't have, right? And we know that of the three million high school graduates that graduated this last spring, only a third of them actually uh, went on to, to college. Uh, so the other third never decided, they decided not to ever touch, touch foot uh, on a college campus. And so it's that two thirds that, that I think is really where a community college can help the community out and uh, help students that, that don't have the, the idea of going on and getting a baccalaureate degree right now, maybe down the road they might, but right now they, they may not want to do that. And so you mentioned vocational technical, professional technical kinds of training. Mm -hmm. um, that's an important area. And we have, we have things like the RN program, the uh, auto, auto uh, mechanics program, marine diving program. Um, if you want to be a policeman or a fireman, um, you can go to Allen Hancock or Ventura College. They have academies for that. Um, but we can certainly take care of some of the general education requirements for those kinds of things. Um, but community colleges in the, in the South Central Coast area here are just fantastic. We, we are so lucky and so fortunate to have great community colleges uh, in Santa Barbara County and in Ventura County as well. Um, but th those vocational areas and certificates are, are a great pathway. And here's an interesting statistic for you. 
certificate holders of vocational ed kinds of training um, in about 30% of the cases end up earning more than people that have baccalaureate degrees. People don't realize that. I mean, you can go, to a, go to a, through a one-year certificate program at a community college, and depending on what field you're in, if you're in computer science or gaming or animation or some of those kinds of things, you can end up making more than somebody that went through a four-year degree at, you know, at one of the four-year colleges. Um, so I think that's, that's one of the big benefits of, of, uh, of, a, of a certificate program and exploring that. And the other thing is, is that if you decide, well, I want to go on to a, a four-year school, you now have something that you can, you can take and you can leverage off of and get even further more, more uh, intense training on you know, at the four-year school. Glad you're sharing this because viewers who are watching, I think, learned a lot from that, that segment in terms of what the city college can offer, a number one city college can offer to students that enter it, but also in terms of um, the benefits in terms of going on to a, a different kind of career that, that doesn't require necessarily a baccalaureate degree. Mm -hmm. So uh, really appreciate that. I think it's really helpful for, for viewers. Well, one thing, Anthony, that you, you can't these days talk about SB SBCC without talking about the SBCC Promise. So for those people who don't know what it is, can you share first of all, what is the Promise program? <laughs> well, you know, the Promise, just as an overarching statement, mm -hmm. the, the SBCC Foundation Promise is really a promise to the community. And what it says is, is that the promise is this, if you graduate from high school in any of the local high schools within the Santa Barbara City College District, and you, within one year, apply for, uh, apply to go to the college, um, that you, all of your books, all of your tuition, and all of your school supplies will be paid for. And so, you know, it takes a big chunk of the cost of attending school mm -hmm. um, off, off the, the backs of the students and the parents. Um, of course, the big one is housing, and if you're, if you're a local student, you can still stay at home and, mm -hmm. And so that's kind of taken care of too. So in many ways, it, it eliminates the excuse of, well, I can't go to college because it costs too much. The, the Santa Barbara City College Foundation uh, enables that uh, to not be an issue. And that is an incredible uh, opportunity for a promise for the students that the foundation provides. And um, tell us a little bit about the impact that that promise has made in our community with students so far. Well, I should tell you too, it's a two, the books, tuition, and supplies are paid for for two full years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, that's really, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's really the model for Promise programs across the United States. Mm -hmm. You'll hear Promise programs bantied about and talked about, but in truth, there's major differences between and among the, the different Promise programs that are out there. And uh, Jeff Green, the CEO of the, the SBCC Foundation, has done just a fabulous job of setting this up and, and working with uh, the structure to get it, to get it all moving forward. Um, we've been doing this for one year, so it's just it's brand new. We don't have a lot of data yet um, in terms of, of uh, how, what the impact is on the students. We know that anecdotally, um, just in terms of talking with the students, meeting with the students that there are students that would never have come to SBCC had it not been for the promise. And to me, um, the access to education is, is, is one of the, the, the big shining spots when it comes to the promise program is to enable students that wouldn't have ever come here to actually come to Santa Barbara City College mm -hmm. and, and do well and do great things and change their lives forever. So I think it's, it's really exciting. It's very significant. It is exciting. And we're so fortunate to have a community with a community college with this promise, truly. And so, Anthony, you are the president of SBCC. You have um, an incredible staff. You have amazing students. It's in a, a most probably most beautiful part of, of this central coast area or perhaps anywhere. Um, there's got to be some incredible pieces that come with being the president of SBCC. What are, what's one, what's one great component of being the president? Well, you know, one of the things that, that uh, it's nice to be able to say is, is that, well, we've got a promise program or we've got this or that or some other kind of a, of a building that we're, we're putting up or, or something. 
But, but really, when it gets right down to it, some of the most significant things have to do with the, the changes in the student lives that you see. I mean, students that come to community colleges um, many times are, are single parents, many times are working multiple jobs, many times come from extreme poverty um, and are really struggling to try to make it work. And they start out at the college and you meet them, you talk with them, you find out what their story is and then you watch them over the next two years uh, blossom into something that neither you or, or the student ever believed that they could accomplish and it's just it's so heartening to be able to see that happen. And I know that in your job you see that too. I mean, it's just, it's great to see, great to witness. And that's really, I think, the prize of being, you know, involved with a community college like I am. You said earlier it was all about giving back. And boy, are you giving back as uh, president of City College and, Thank and you. yes, and really impacting the lives of, of so many people so many students at your, your college. We're really fortunate to have you as a leader at SBCC. And, and as we draw our interview to a close, I just have a few final questions. Um, really, one is, what message do you have? What, what message would you like to share with the, with the youth um, in our schools who might be entering into City College? You're, you're working with partners in education, that's K through TK through 12. You really have a vision of zero all the way to college, I know. So what about youth in our schools? What message do you have for them? Youth that are at the college or youth at the school? Youngsters at the, in the schools. Youngsters? Uh -huh. Well, I think the message would be to both the, the youth in the schools and their parents. Uh -huh. And I would say that uh, participate in the dual enrollment program as much as you can. I mean, I think that the dual enrollment program that we have at the college is one of the best kept secrets. And I don't want it to be a secret. I want everybody to know about it. Right. This is the program where, as a, as a person in junior high or high school, you can actually get dual credit, high school credit and college credit for a class that you're taking uh, at the high school at, after hours. So don't keep that a secret, right? Don't keep right. it a secret. <laughs> Tell everybody about it. Right. And uh, the fantastic part is, is that we've had students come from the high schools, graduate from high school and come to the college, and they've got like a year of college under their belt. Mm -hmm. So they have a year to go. I mean, it saves money, it saves time, it's just fantastic. So my message to them would be, to the parents particularly, focus on, on dual enrollment. Even taking one dual enrollment class a, a semester or something is, is, is a great advantage. That's great. You, you answered all of my final questions okay. in one, so I really appreciate that, Anthony. And we're so fortunate to have you, as I said, as a leader of in our community and of Santa Barbara City College. You came you, to Susan. us You came to us as the people's uh, president. I know that that's something that's uh, important to you to be, to be really uh, connected with the community and have relationships really matter and build that trust. And, and you really have, even in the one year that you've been here. Um, so we, we are so fortunate and thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you, Susan, for all that you're doing. And, and you've, you're following some, in some you know, big footsteps there from Bill and everything, but you're already making a big impact and doing just a great job. Thank so you. thank you for your service. Thank you too. I'm Susan Salcido, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools. Thank you so much for joining us today for this edition of Schools of Thought.